Now, away from Nigeria, the pharmaceutical firm Merck announced last week that an antiviral pill it's developing can cut hospitalizations and deaths among people with COVID-19 by half. The results haven't yet been peer-reviewed, but if the drug candidate Monopiravir is authorized by regulators, it would be the first oral antiviral treatment for COVID-19. Well, talking about more on the drug, joining us right now is Dr. Peter Imoesi, research fellow, University of Aberdeen. He joins us from Scotland. Thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. So tell us, how does this antiviral pill become the game changer in the fight against COVID-19? Um, I think in some quarters, it's regarded as the game changer because one, it's a single pill. Um, you just need to take it as oral dose. That is one. Then two, it has the capability to interfere with the genome of the SARS-CoV-2 virus thereby leading to reduction or preventing replication of that particular virus, which is a SARS-CoV-2. Then also you can take the drug as well within the confined or within the comfort of your home. So in that regard, you will say, yes, it's a game changer. Then on the other route, we know that it's one of the first um, oral pill for SARS-CoV-2 virus we know at the moment. Then also, I think in my own opinion, when you say it's a game changer, then you have to look at the other way around, um, out where we know that for you to get onto this particular um, medication, if you're a childbearing um, woman, you need to test for your pregnancy first to ensure that you're not pregnant before you can get onto this medication. Also, you need to do a PCR test to confirm if you're positive before you can get onto the medication as well. So on two sides, one is a game changer, on the other side, there are little bottlenecks here and there before you can get onto the medication. And perhaps these are some of the things it will go through about its safety and efficacy before a decision is made by the US FDA. Yes, um, based on the interim data we saw, based on the press release from Mark, we know that people who were on the placebo arm, they, they are three times more likely to withdraw from the trial compared to individuals who were on the drug itself. So when it comes to safety, um, I checked on, on the clinical um, trial.gov website where um, drug companies do register their um, clinical trials. And I was able to see that the phase one and phase two clinical trial um, experiments were actually recorded in that particular website. So for the safety, I think uh, Mike are actually working on that as well. Now, when it comes to the efficacy, based on the press release, we were also told that it holds against the current variant we have, which is the Delta variant, the Gamma, and the Mu. So when it comes to the efficacy, it's holding against those sort of variants in circulation at the moment. But Dr. Imoesi, the makers of the drug specifically asked the FDA to grant emergency use for adults with mild to moderate uh, COVID-19 who are at risk. Um, I mean, does that mean it's a different outcome for severe cases or those who are at risk for severe uh, case of COVID-19? Um, I won't regard it in that light because one, before you get to the level of severity, you know that there are three other outcomes you need to go through first. One is asymptomatic, two is the mild, three is the moderate. So before you get to the level of severe, it means that you have to go through these three stages. And from the data we saw from Mark, we are aware that when it comes to hospitalization, this particular medication do have the capability to cut that by 50%. So if this medication do have the capacity to reduce hospitalization, it means that the road to severity will be cut short by 50%. So for those within that particular, um, let's say, bracket of um, severe cases, then you have a limitation there. Also, don't forget, we also have the vaccines with the capacity to also limit severity hospitalization and death. So it's a little bit kind of um, complicated, but both the medications and the vaccines do have the capability to stop severity as well. Where does the World Health Organization stand in all of this? Um, I saw the press release from World Health Organization yesterday, and I think um, their points are valid. First, I think America should go ahead to make um, available their clinical trial data 
both the phase one, phase two, and phase three, which is necessary for transparency. Then they should go on to publish these same findings in a peer-reviewed journal as well, because that is the way science is done. Then secondly, I also read in the uh, Mark um, press release where they said they are actually in communication with drug regulators around the world. So if you are going through that particular route, then you need to carry along the WHO because that is a world platform when it comes to response to pandemic and other global health issues. So I think um, WHO are actually on the right trajectory. That is one. Also, we know that when it comes to the cost for the monoprevir drug, it's somewhere around 700 US dollars. So World Health Organization should be able to regulate the cost price and the availability of this particular medication to low and middle income countries. So I think it's a welcome development for World Health to demand for those clinical trial data as well. Finally, I mean, looking at other therapies which we've had, uh, if you recall, the antiviral remdesivir, and there's also the, is it the cocktail uh, from the firm Regeneron. Where does that put, you know, this particular pill from Merck? So I'm not going to really relegate really those two medications from um, monoclonal antibody and remdesivir because when you look at the pandemic, these sort of medications have actually played a role in the response to this particular pandemic we are in. Also, the only downside to those medications is that it's, you need to administer that medication through intravenous um, injections. That is just the downside to those drugs. Also, with the remdesivir, we know that once that particular drug is administered within the first three days of the onset of the disease, it's actually very promising at limiting the rate of severity and death as well. So those two drugs have actually held their ground in the era of COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas when it comes to the Merck, we know that it's just, a tablet, um, it's just a pill where people could literally take that within the confine of their home. That's just the difference. But when it comes to the two um, platform, I would say both are necessary in terms of responding to the pandemic as it were at the moment. So quite hopeful, another tool in our toolbox to fighting the pandemic. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Peter Imoesi. is a research fellow, University of Aberdeen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.